Howdy, howdy. I'm John Zadar, and this is On Top and Hot. This is February 23rd, and it's Wednesday. We're looking at OTC and penny stocks. They got something going for them, some mystery maybe, some potential, a hot runner. Whatever it is, I want to share it with you and give you the option to consider it, and I'll show you why you might want to do that. So let's jump into it, and I'll show you what I got today. We are looking at a nuke. <laughs> N-U-K-K, -K, Nucleus Inc. And we're doing our due diligence on the OTC markets. It's the most current information you're going to find online. The SEC and FINRA update this information every day. So why waste your time searching, sorting through old stuff? Just come here. So Nuke Nucleus finished the day after a roller coaster of a ride. This was one heck of a day for her. My goodness. She finished the day at 20 and a half cents. 2% down. What a shame. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She has a transfer agent verified, but I don't see a verified profile here, which is another block that I like to see. I've never seen it actually be a bad thing not to have it, but it's not hurt having it. Does that make sense? <laughs> so what does this company do? Well, Nuke is involved in Finances Online Web3. They've got a lot of different applications from big corporations with their AI analytics and financial research down to cryptocurrency payment platforms and even trading derivative assets. And we'll touch on to that a little bit more. They had news today and I do believe that helped it. I know you can't see it, but it helped it run today. What was the relative volume around the company? Well, normally she does 55,000. Today she did 355,000. So you got about six times as much shares, maybe five, which is pretty good considering that the volume on the OTC market now is very light. What is her share structure? Hot dog, we got a low float. Just over 16 million shares. Very impressive. That's going to explain why it was bouncing the way it was today. And what about her financials? Well, you know, it looks good. That's an annual 19.2 million, 19.2 million. It says to put three zeros behind that. But isn't that a strange number? Every year they're doing that in total revenue? Oh, that sounds like someone's just carrying something over. And this one's barely above it. And then when you look at the cost of revenues, I mean, they didn't get to keep anything. Not, not really. So I don't know what to think about those financials. And what about her disclosures? We got anything over there to help us understand? Uh, actually, we do have uh, this disclosure and this disclosure. This is the 8K, but I do believe this has to do with the news I'm going to share with you. Absolutely does. So let's just jump on over to that news now and I'll share it with you. Now, when it comes to news, Nuke hasn't got a lot going on. We got two news presses in seven years here. One in 2015, which we're not going to take a look at. And then the one that came out today, which we will. Now, this is all about their merger. Nuke is merging with Brilliant Acquisition Corp. And once it's completed, they're going to be worth about $140 million. Now, they expect to be on the NASDAQ once this deal closes. That would be in the second or third quarter of this year. So you're looking at about four to seven months, roughly. And they're going to use the ticker NUKK. Now, what's most interesting about this is that both companies are already on the market. You see, Nuke wants to get to the NASDAQ, but she doesn't want to go through the process of uplisting through the OTC to get there. She wants to shortcut and leap up to the NASDAQ through a reverse merger. And Brilliant Acquisition Corp is a special purpose acquisition company. They're not doing any business. They're not making any money. All they did was get a hold of a ticker and keep it clean for somebody who wanted to get on the NASDAQ like Nuke. Ta-da! everybody's happy. But rather than use their ticker BRLI, they're going to toss that to the wind and they're going to use their NUKK. And I assure you, brilliant acquisition is not offended. Cha-ching! Not offended at all. So what does this company do? Well, the company is involved in all sorts of digital derivatives, cryptocurrencies, uh, payment platforms. They work with the little person in front of the cash register, and they also work with the big companies that need analytics and financial research done. So they've got a lot going on for them, and you can probably go over to their website and get more information. But what's most important here is that once this deal closes, there's going to be a reverse split. 
Yes, sir, there is. Right here, they tell us they're going to do a 1 in 25 reverse split. Actually, it's a 1 in 25.146. Now they say this could vary, it could change, but they are going to do one. So for every 25 shares you have, they're going to give you one share. They're going to be worth the same. Now what will probably happen is once that reverse split happens, the stock will dip. You're going to have a lot of disgruntled, frustrated invest investors who lost their shares. But you're on the NASDAQ now. You've got a company like this working with money in lots of different ways up in a market where money is predominant. You have your institutions and your hedge funds that can now invest in it and would not touch it on the OTC market. You have big whales that can look at it. You can get lots more business if you kick the price up and that's what's going to happen. The price will go up 25 times what it is right now. So there's only one thing left. It has to be approved. It has to be approved by the shareholders. So we'll get a letter, a press release, saying that there was a shareholder vote and we'll find out if it was approved. Looks as though if it isn't approved, they may not get up to the NASDAQ. They need that reverse split. That's probably how they're going to pay for the deal. I don't know. But in either case, it is what is just shortly ahead of us. Let's go see what that chart looks like and see if we can get ahead of it. So this is Nuke, N-U-K-K, six month, four hour chart on TOS. If you don't have a trading platform, no excuses. This one's free. Just go over to TD Ameritrade, sign up. That's free. They don't need any money from you. You don't have to even trade with them. Just keep your account open and you can use TOS as well. So that is six months, four hours for N-U-K-K. And there really isn't any news, right? We had one piece of news today and one seven years ago. So to actually tell you I know for fact what has gone on here, I really can't. However, I did do some investigation and right here is the end of August going into September. And I believe it was August 28th, there is an 8K on filing that says that they made a 70% acquisition of a company called Match Financial. Now, I didn't do a lot of research beyond that. I just know they got 70% and I didn't even think much about it till I'm now looking at this chart. And I can see that that deal probably had something to do with it. Match Financial and they do financial services as their businesses. So there must be a bigger tie. And this was a huge jump. This went from uh, about uh, 15 cents up to $2.30. So you're looking there at uh, what? 6, 12, 15, roughly 14, 15 times jump. That means 1,500%. Uh, that was giant. She came all the way back down, bounced right off that 200, bounced on it like a ball, and then went underneath and fell down here to the 200 hull, which is like the 200 SMA, except it takes the current affairs into account and it's laying right on that right now let's come down to that five day five minute this is what i was talking about look at that bounce she went all the way up way down way down deep right back up again and back down to where where she started from her basic average she just wasted the day but was it a waste buy low sell high buy low sell high <laughs> there's two opportunities right there to, to make money on this. Now she originally started the day before at about 21 cents and went to 26. So you're looking at about 20, 25% gains roughly. But it fell all the way down to 15 cents. Came back up here to that 25 cents again. So now you're looking at about 65, 70% on a second bounce. But sad to say, she is right back there. Now, I don't know. Did people read about this and say, whoa, we got a NASDAQ up list. This is exciting. And then they kept reading. It's like, uh-oh, there's a reverse split. <laughs> so everybody got out. And then they read and thought about it and said, now, wait a minute. They're going to the NASDAQ. That's a good thing. Burp, and everybody got back in. I really can't explain why that is so erratic today. But the bottom line is she is right back where she started from. And we know what's going to happen. It just hasn't happened. None of it has happened yet. The merger is supposed to be closed in what? Four to seven months, second to third quarter of this year. And that's when the reverse split will occur. And that's only if the shareholders vote it through. So we got to get a press release that says, yes, we want the up list. We're willing to accept the split. 
if that comes out, I think actually the NASDAQ news will outweigh the reverse split news. And I think you'll get a bounce. At least one of these, a letter M, <laughs> you know, at least you'll get a couple chances. I think it'll be one of those sort of things. And if it's a no, well, honestly, you would think that that would hurt it. But I have seen stocks do some crazy things because if the shareholders voted no, they got their way. And when the news comes out, they got their way. To me and you, it sounds like bad news, but the stock goes up. So it will be interesting. And then obviously when they do close the deal, you're going to have your reverse split, which will probably dip the stock, but it's going to get exciting because then they're going to have a new ticker. Well, same ticker, just a new street, a new block. They'll be on the NASDAQ. So this may be a good time to get in. It may fall again. Only get part of what you want then right now. I don't know how you want to play this. There's a long thing to go. But as I said, when that press release of the shareholders comes out, something, something's going to happen with this. 16 million float, right? Something's going to happen with this. So, NUKK could explode on the next press release. Now we're focusing in on U.S. Lighting Group, ticker USLG. They finished today at 14 cents, 75% up without any news today, though they did have news yesterday. Pink Current got a verified profile and a transfer agent as well, so they look good. Now this company is into making boats and RVs that are super light, super strong, and very practical. That is what they're doing, but I can't find anything about the boats. The, the Fusion X Marine aspect of their business, there's just not a lot of information out there. I could have gone digging, but I mean there was nothing just sitting there for you to look at. However, Cortez Campers, that's a whole different ball game. They're just all about that right now. Their camper, well, let me show you. So this is CortezCampers.com website. Pictures worth a thousand words, right? Well, there's the little bugger right there. 17 foot of beauty. This is 17 foot fully contained. And the amazing thing about this trailer is there is nothing biodegradable on it. Absolutely nothing. There's no wood, no staples, no nails, none of that stuff. They've used all this new space technological materials, which is a aluminized fiberglass carbon fiber material. Super strong, very light, molded. This obviously is very aerodynamic and it is weather resistant, even to the sun. You see that beautiful sheeny shine it's got? They claim that's a lifetime shine. They sure do. And this is on the inside and the outside as well. Super strong, very light. Towing is going to be a complete different thing here when you have half the weight of any trailer and that aerodynamics is going to help. Now it's got everything. I mean, literally, they call this a four season trailer. And I don't know of many trailers that are four season. Winters can be pretty rough, but they say this material actually has an insulation factor. The windows are actually dual pane weatherized windows that are tinted and open up. They've also got a furnace, of course they do, propane, which comes with its own tank, air conditioning for the summer. Since that's electric, it comes with its own battery, but obviously it can be connected to other sources of electricity. The neat thing here is that it has independent suspension. Not only is it super light and aerodynamic and it's going to tow behind you like a breeze, but when you hit a bump, it's not going to bounce so hard that you think you broke something. It's going to have that independent suspension and be able to bounce around. Plus, you've got that added clearance underneath since there's no rod going across there. You don't have to worry about getting caught on a rock or a stump. Now, let's take a look at the inside. Like I said, it's just as shiny and clean with lots of storage over the top. Your AC, the tables go flat. This opens up into a big bed. This one opens up into a smaller bed. And of course, it's got all of the amenities. It comes with a 24 inch TV, a sink, actually two sinks, one in the bathroom, stove, oven, refrigerator, microwave. And did you notice there? It's even got a shower. Yeah, it's got a shower in there. So you've got everything that you're going to need here. You know, we're not talking about living here forever. We're talking about vacations. And these are going for about $48,000. They are now selling them in the States and they are now selling them in Canada. And you'll get to hear more about that when we get to the news. Now remember, the company had no news today, but she did have news yesterday. Her relative volume is pretty incredible. She normally does 2,000 shares a day, actually less. And today she did 281,000. 
That's over 140 times her normal volume. That is mind-blowing. That's incredible. And that's not bad. 13.5 million shares in the float. Goody, goody, goody. That's two low floats in a row we've had. And what are her financials? She making any money? By golly, she is. Now, this is her annual two million, two and a half million. We know it's millions. Remember those three zeros. Four million in 2020. But it seems to me there should be a change here. Right, because I read in their latest financial quarterly reports, which we're going to take a look at through the news, they made a drastic change, which really affected their income. And there it is. There it is. Wow, we dropped from from 4 million down to less than 1 million to 1,000. June's quarter last year, $1,000 and 21,000 for the uh, September quarter of last year. But like I said, they've made changes and it is explained in the news. And any new disclosures that we can look at? Uh, no, that's 2020. And uh, no, that's a couple weeks ago. So let's go check out the news. Now, when we take a look at their news, you can see they actually have a lot going on and a lot ending, actually. All the way back here to October 2020, they had a company, had Intellectronics. This was a company they were operating. I'm not sure what they were doing, but they were making money. We're going to take a look at the last quarter's financial results, and they tell us that they were making lots of money with this company, but they're not going to include them in the results, and they're getting rid of it. I'm not quite sure why, except that they really want to focus on their campers. Now, they make boats, but you don't hear them talking about the boats. You just hear them talking about the RVs and campers. And here in January of 2021, that's when it started. They're adding the recreational vehicles to their portfolio. They've chosen to feature carbon fiber RVs, and they're into the business. And that stops, the news does, here on the 12th of February. But there was more news. Now, why it's not here, I don't know. But luckily, they brought it in for us so we don't have to go searching. There are places like Seeking Alpha and PR Newswire that they went and harvested other news. And it got, does continue right up until uh, yesterday, as a matter of fact. Now, this one here I want to look at because it has some pertinent information. So these are the financial results for the last third quarter. And we're going to look at the last nine months. That is from January to September of 2021. And we're going to compare that to the same months in 2020. Now, this is interesting and even a little mind boggling. Last year, between January and September, they made $23,000. I know it ain't very much. But when you consider that the year before the same nine months, they only did $2,000. So it's a big jump. But here's the curious part and the mind-boggling part. That other company that they have, Intellitronics, they made $2.5 million with them, and they're not including that in these financials. And I don't know why. They tell us in the next statement that they made a net profit of $3.1 million last year compared to losing $440,000 in 2020. So there was a big jump last year. They were making money. But they tell us they sold that money-making company for $3.9 million in May of 2021. I don't know why. Why do you give up a money-making company unless you think you're going to make more money? And that's obviously what they think. And they jumped on the bandwagon real quick. Right after this news press came out, they went and got an international distributor. This is a U.S. company. They went and got a distributor up in Manitoba, Canada. Then they got a couple distributors in Florida and Oregon. And just here recently, they've added one in Idaho. And it's just growing. They're popular. They are selling and they think they're going to make a lot of money with it, don't they? So let's go take a look at that chart and see what it presents as an opportunity for us. So there's the camper company, USLG, been under the 200 for the entire six month period. Well, almost. We got a little poke right there today. Boop right through the 200, which, you know, isn't anything small because I'm looking at that MACD seeing that it has been a couple months. She's been fighting to get over this signal line. She's gotten up there, almost fell, fought to get back up and is now fighting to actually climb. And the RSI looks to be supporting it. And now with all that volume coming in, it looks very determined to get above that 200. 
Let's come down to the 20 day, one hour. I don't think we'll see much because there's not a lot of volume. We're only getting about 2,000 shares a day except for today. So you can see not a whole lot happening here until today. So let's just take a look at the five day, five minute. Yeah, see we got one day here and that's all the activity. There's one day, all the activity. Now what is strange is yesterday's when the news came out, the 22nd. It not only fell, but it hit a low bubble here. And you go from that low bubble to where it closed the day. That is virtually 100% gains. Now, they say we finished off at 75, but <laughs> from yesterday, it's virtually 100. Now, remember, this camper company has no catalyst today. It was yesterday's news. But they've got lots of things that they're doing. We're coming into the warmer season now. And I don't know how many distributors they're going to get, but they're small. They're cute they're lightweight they're practical they have lifetime warranties virtually so there could be a lot of things coming they didn't promise anything there's no acquisitions nothing like that on the table we're just watching the company grow so this may be a little high to buy in on today sure you know time is going to go by if there's no news i expect this would fall that's just the way it is. The market tends to move money away from things that aren't growing. But I would watch for tomorrow. I would watch to see how this is going to get above this. It's already poked at once. Now it may dip down to the 50. Down to the 50 and bounce off this 50 and try to push back up. And I'm on the four hour chart here. So to see that, you can't come over to the five minute chart and be looking for the 200 to bounce off of. It's not there. You have to come over to the 400. And that's what I do when I'm trading. If I'm over here and I see it fall, and let's say I'm on the five minute, five day, and this falls way down here, and it's like hanging here in mid air, I'm going, oh my God, it's gonna fall. There's nothing there to hold it. Well, besides your support lines, I will back up. I will back up to the hour and see if there's a line that it's hitting. It's like, oh, it's right there. It's bouncing off the 20 on the one hour because they're all playing at the same time. You can only look at one area at one time. So don't be afraid to bounce around to get your view. So I anticipate this to probably fall. Without constant news on it, it doesn't get a lot of shares normally. I don't know why it had a delayed effect, but curiously, it could bounce again tomorrow on that. But overall, I expect it to dip. And if you like the company, if you think they're gonna grow coming into the warm season, wait for them to get down here, maybe around, uh, Oh, just under a dime. Yeah, maybe just under a dime when it gets down to the 20 day. It may come down to the 50. It's possible. Watch your technicals. Remember, don't buy everything at one time. If you're in it for a long haul, buy some today. It may fall. Probably will. Buy some when it falls. You'll feel good that day. Yeah, imagine feeling good on a day your stock falls because you got it at a better price. All right, let's go check that last one out. And coincidentally, the last stock we're looking at begins with a Z. This is Zag, Z-A-A-G, Zag Group. Finished today at an amazingly low price, triple zero seven. She had 40% gains today on the pink tier and current has a verified profile on a transfer agent. So she looks good even though she's cheap. And she's had a lot of news here recently. Now the company used to do one thing and they're now into clothing and apparel. And they're starting something new too, but well, I'm at a loss to explain it because they haven't quite explained it. And we'll get into that as we move along. So there has been some volume pickup on this company just because of the stuff they're doing. Normally they're doing 76 million shares a day. That's a lot of shares. Today she did 300 million shares. Now remember, for uh, 0 0.0001, you can get a million shares for 100 bucks. So it is cheaper down here, but nonetheless, she is getting volume and the volume is increasing. What is her share structure? Oh, well, two out of three, <laughs> bad. 1.3 billion shares. Okay, we got a ton of shares in the float. And I'm not expecting any finances. Well, surprise, surprise again. We do have finances. Remember those three zeros? So we're at $686,000 here in 2018. Again, we're back to roughly that in 2020. What's the quarterly? We got anything going on here? No, we got zero, but it's actually been marked. It's not like it was skipped. 
So they had a hard time last quarter and they did 16,000. So they've been running downhill. So things have got to change for this company and maybe the news today is all about that. They seem to think so. So is there any disclosures that they've actually put out here recently? That's from November and that's from 2013. Nope, so all we got is the news. Now looking at Zag's news is a lot like watching a soap opera with all the twists and turns and the zigs and zags, if you'll excuse the pun. You just really don't know what's going to come next here. We see all the way back in July of last year, you got two pieces of news here about iconic crop solutions, but you don't see that anymore. So when I jumped into that news, I learned that they had an arrangement with the First Nations community to help them become self-sufficient and create some employment opportunities. And they were doing this by by providing them these grow pods where they grew marijuana and we're going to make medicinal marijuana products out of it. And they had a harvest coming up just at that time. But just a few months later, they have ZA Group shareholders update. As if they've got a lot to say, they only say one thing. One thing only. The company announces that they have rescinded the agreement with the Iconic Group Solutions for cause. The company is focused on developing our other subsidiaries and anticipates future growth and acquisitions in this sector. The company wishes Iconic Crop Solutions and their management well in their future endeavors. See ya! Just that fast. One minute they're in, the next minute they weren't. And you can see that from the first piece of news in July to the year out of here in November, they made two acquisitions, NFID and Forever Brands. And both of these are different types of clothing products. One is targeted towards your middle class woman with different types of makeup, clothing, and bedding. The other one, NFID, is marketing towards teenagers, young adults with their types of clothing. So you've got those two things going on and you can see here they're pushing that. They're getting their consumer brands out there. They got a website. They have a winter collection that they just kicked off. They have a new limited edition of Active Life where they've just started with. Sounds like they finally figured out what they're doing. <laughs> Then we get news today. Za Group updates the market and announces definitive agreement for new large scale acquisition. And large scale acquisition is what they want you to pay attention. Do. They've got it in this press release over and over again. You can see it highlighted in green here. They tell us that on Tuesday, February 15th, 2022, that all parties have come to terms and it is agreed, whereas ZA will acquire 60% of this new large scale acquisition. The lawyers are finishing the definitive agreement for executing the deal between ZA Group and the acquisition company, and they look to close on this in the next coming days. Hopefully they mean that literally. This new large scale acquisition is in a rapidly expanding and fast growing marketplace and it's something everyone needs in the world to live. Water? <laughs> I don't know. They say that we will close on this acquisition in the coming days. ZA Group will look to release multiple press releases so that we can disclose all the details on the deal and the company as well as the enormous upside potential it creates for the company and its marketplace. So catalyst upon catalyst, they're telling us we got more press releases coming and you don't know what it is yet so you're going to want to know. They also let us know that NFID, the Teenagers Clothing Apparel, will will be accepting cryptocurrency on its website as payment for the apparel lines in the near future. The company will be integrating the payment system to begin accepting Bitcoin, Ethereum, and other cryptocurrencies. So there you've got it. They're into clothing now. They're into women's adult clothing. They're also into teenage young adults clothing. And now they've got some special large scale acquisition deal and company that they are getting with. And I can't wait to see what it is just so I don't have to highlight all these individual words. Let's go take a look at that chart now and see what it looks like. Looks like many, many stocks. This is Zag, Z-A-A-G, six month, four hour chart. High bubble in this corner, low bubble in that corner. And roughly, we've gone from four cents down to triple zero four. That is a 10,000% difference between the two. That is a huge gulf. We had a big 400% jump here. As she fought the 200, she bounced off of the 50 here. 
fought and fought until she lost all the battles with everybody. Got underneath them all. Took a couple months. She got back over that 50, crossed the 200, and a smaller battle, just like the one here she fought, came down and bounced and lost it again. And now she's, well, crawling on her knees. Shame, shame, shame. She is way down there. Let's come down to the 20 day, one hour. All right, she is still under the 200. Just poked her finger through it, and she is definitely holding more than 50% of that jump today. She has broken into the triple digits right here about 18 days ago. Hit a low bubble here about seven days ago, but hit it again here. That's the same low. I don't know why it's not showing up over here too, but that, that is a low, and that bounce is not off of that low, even though there should be a bubble there. As a matter of fact, we come in on the five day, five minute, there will be. See, we got a low bubble. And obviously it does the one furthest out because that's a four two, but it's not counting that one. So in either case, it bounced, but not off the low bubble. It bounced because of that speculative news. They purposely wrote it that way. They wanted people to to project their own dreams onto it. What could it be? What could it be? And when you're down here in triple zero bill, you know, a hundred dollar bill right now at what? We're at uh, 0 .007, 0 .007. If this goes all the way back up to the high six months ago, which was only four cents, you're talking about uh, 55, 100, $6,000 for every hundred dollar bill you invest. That's right. That's right. So you don't have to invest the mortgage. Just invest your Vegas money. A hundred dollar bill, a two hundred dollar bill and be patient. Just be patient. Think of it as a lottery ticket without an expiration date. Nobody's telling you to go broke on these things. But we have a company here that's going to have press releases come out. These press releases have been built to tease and please. So when they come out, they're going to give us something. And this is at a price where there's no extra digit behind that nine. This is it. If it falls, it falls to eight. If it goes up, it goes up to the very next one. But when it goes up to the next one, a new digit opens up on the other side that has to roll over before it goes up. So these don't move very fast down here. But when they get to that double zero, they start to pick up momentum. Think of it as second gear. And this one's right on the edge of second gear and it's got the teaser pleaser PRs coming. And we don't know when they're gonna happen. So as I said, a lottery ticket without an expiration date. $50 can make you a few thousand dollars if it just gets up over a penny. Yes, no problem. So there you go. So I had a little bit of this and a little bit of that. We had campers, reverse mergers, and we even have a mystery thrown in there on top of it. You never know what you're going to find. We know there's going to be a lot of press releases still coming. We know that from two of the companies we looked at, they have more to tell us and they're anxious to tell us. And that's probably going to cause the stocks to move. The other one is projected just for a long time from now. We're waiting for it to happen. And in between now and then, they could make some good revenues. So we've got a wide variety to consider. But remember, DD is still a part of these companies. You've got to keep up with the news. You've got to keep up with the filings. When you put them in your watch list, you just don't look at the charts. You got to look around. The more you learn, the more you earn. And the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.